Hello YouTube family. I am here with another video. I am sorry that I am taking so long to get videos out at the moment. We have actually got a ton of stuff going on. Um, things that I want to be able to share with you, but right at this moment, I can't share anything. Um, but I hope to be able to share some news soon. Um, so I am literally like a crazy person at the moment. I am just constantly busy with, you know, general life, um, but also we're moving. So I'm dealing with the craziness of packing up our house and all of that. So it's, re it's been really hard for me to try and find like a spare second, um, to sit down and actually film a video. But this video is something that I really wanted to film and get out there, um, pretty quickly, um, because it has to do with a lot of a series of events that have happened recently and a decision that I have made. Um, so I'm literally sitting on my bedroom floor because uh, my parents have my camera tripod and um, the good lighting is in my bedroom but I've got like the camera propped up on the bed on a book to try and keep it steady. And I wouldn't be a mum if I wasn't multitasking so I'm eating my lunch while I film this because I'm not going to get time to sit down and eat my lunch and then film the video and then do everything that I need to do before the girls get up from their naps. So, on to what this video is about. Okay, so, uh, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you, you may have seen a post recently about um, some issues that I had been having. Uh, it was on a post about uh, the fact that Caprice has been really difficult and I've been going through some stuff um, myself that I wanted to be able to share with you but I, I knew I wanted to put it into a video because the post, if I tried to write it as a post on a photo, it would have just been so ridiculously long. So I wanted to share that with you now. So actually I really need to eat. <laughs> if I actually get straight into the video, I'm not going to eat and then I'm going to be starving. Literally feel like I'm going to vomit. I'm so hungry. All I'm eating today is lettuce cups with baked sweet potato and, and potato and I also just baked up some tofu as well and I have a little bit of tahini maple dressing thing that recipe is in another what I ate in a day video mm. Seriously, the simplest food makes me so happy. This is so simple, yet it's so delicious. So easy to make. That's all you need, guys. Food does not have to be complicated to be good and tasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should hold me for a little while. So, if you haven't seen my My Struggles with Breastfeeding video already, I'll leave the link in the description below. Please go and check that out. Um, it explains my issues with my breastfeeding journey with Haven. And that is kind of like a backstory to where I'm at now and what this video has to do with. So. It'll give you a better understanding of what's been going on with me and what I've been through um, before you actually continue watching this video. So feel free to go and watch that. So basically, as you know, I have been um, exclusively hand expressing for Haven since she was seven months old. Um, that's when she completely stopped sucking my breasts at all. Uh, but prior to that, um, from when she was... Um, just under three months to when she was seven months, it was on and off because my letdowns obviously had stopped. So uh, I was hand expressing and giving her a bottle, but I was also still trying to get her to stay on the breast 
hoping that once my letdown started up again, she would come back to um, full-time breastfeeding, but that never happened. She eventually just completely rejected me. And still to this day, you know, for fun, I offer her milk. She knows that her milk comes from my boobs, but I, you know, I offer her milk and I'll like spray the milk in her mouth from my boobs and she just, she doesn't want a bar of my, my boobs at all. So, uh, you know, I'm not in the place that I was when I did that video um, emotionally anymore. I have accepted that this was our fate and that she is not going to come back to breastfeeding. Uh, and it doesn't rip me up inside like it did before. But, um, you know, it's still hard to accept deep down that something that I so deeply wanted um, never worked out. Um, so, basically, I have been hand expressing full time since she was seven months old. She is now 15 months old and um, she obviously eats solids and has been eating solids um, since she was nine months old, but she still relies heavily on breast milk for her nutrition. She's still having about four bottles, four 10 ounce bottles of breast milk a day. And so she's still having quite a bit of milk. So. I was planning to continue hand expressing for as long as I felt that I could and my goal was to get to 18 months. <laughs> Excuse me. My goal was to get to 18 months and potentially longer if I felt capable and I felt like I was just in a happy groove of things. Unfortunately, as I mentioned on my video about my struggles with breastfeeding, I developed pyrrole disorder. I won't go into what pyrrole disorder is on this video. I do explain it in my other video, so please watch that. Um, but basically, depression and anxiety are uh, directly linked to pyrrole disorder. And so, one of my side effects of uh, developing pyrrole disorder was that I was getting chronic anxiety. Um, I'm able to manage that a lot better now. I'm not getting anxiety attacks. I'm on my nutrient supplement, uh, which, you know, helps to level things out with me and restore and replenish my B6 and zinc that I am deficient in due to the pyrrole disorder. However, throughout this whole journey, I have had major ups and downs the entire time and I have fallen in and out of depression and I haven't been diagnosed. I'm self-diagnosing because I know that my disorder is directly linked to depression and I know how I was before I developed pyrrole disorder. I was a very stable person. I was a very happy person. Sure, I got stressed. Sure, I had normal emotions like everyone else. I had unhappy times and unhappy moments and I was stressed at times, but I never had experienced anxiety and I had never experienced depression. I was very stable mentally. Um, and even if something was going wrong in my life, I would get sad, but I wouldn't fall into this deep, dark hole like I have been in this past year. And so I come in and out of it. And if I was to be diagnosed, um, I think that they would probably diagnose it as postpartum depression. And I think that, I don't know if it, is postpartum depression because I think it's more linked to the pyrrole than it is something that happened just because I had another baby. However, I know for a fact that my children, where they're at in their in this stage in their life right now, they're very they're amazing, but they're very tough children. They are you know your typical toddlers, especially Caprice at three years old. She is 100% a three-nager. She has got attitude like you wouldn't believe. And she is very defiant and very feisty and um, doesn't like me much at the moment. Everything is about daddy. And then Haven, Haven is just a little firecracker who doesn't stop. And so just where we're at with both the kids and the dynamic of our family right now, they are major triggers for my anxiety and also for my depression because I will feel overwhelmed and 
um, worked up and you know I do start releasing a lot of cortisol I can actually feel it in my body when my body starts releasing too much cortisol which is your stress hormone and I can just feel my entire body starts tensing up and you know I can fall into this depression and it can just be one day where I am just like I've hit rock bottom for one day and then you know I sleep it off and then the next day it's like it's a new day and I'm okay I've kind of like leveled out again but for that one day I'm in such a dark place where I don't even want to be a mother anymore and I have wanted to run away and just say I give up and just leave my family and those feelings while they're probably normal most mothers probably you know feel like oh I wish I could run away right now but they don't actually want to go ahead with it um, for me, my mind has taken me to some really dark places and so I knew that something more was going on, that it's not just your typical mum feelings, you know, when you're overwhelmed and you just want to run away for the day. No, it, it was something more and I, I just knew that in my gut and in my heart and so anyway, what does this have to do with hand expressing? Well, hand expressing is very very time consuming. I have to do it four to five times a day still to keep up with Haven's demands. Like I mentioned in my struggles with breastfeeding video as well, I am still on a medication, a prescription medication that um, keeps my supply at an oversupply so that I'm able to hand express what Haven needs and I'm also drinking a milk cocktail which is fantastic and I really notice a difference if I don't take that and just take the medication and I've got a video on that it's called how to increase breast milk supply it is fantastic and if I was just breastfeeding and you know maybe felt like my supply had dipped a little bit I would just be taking the cocktail but because I'm hand expressing and I don't have Haven triggering letdowns constantly um, I had to trigger an oversupply in my in my system in order to be able to remove the milk that she needed for her daily needs and so um, I'm unfortunately on this medication which the side effect is that it raises prolactin levels which is what produces the milk. Unfortunately that means that I have unnatural hormonal imbalances going on in my system and that is going to mess with me mentally and emotionally and so I have just started in the last, I've noticed it in the last few weeks, but in the last couple of days, every time I've sat down to hand express, I have literally, it has triggered the most awful anxiety um, instantly, instantaneously. I will sit down and I'll start to hand express and my body starts getting really hot. I get instant brain fog and I start going shaky and I get really, really irritable. And so when the kids are around and I'm hand expressing, and they're used to me hand expressing, but they're still kids and they still want me to do this for them, want me to do that for them. And, you know, they're talking to me and sometimes they're not even demanding anything. They're just being kids and just talking. But my the irritation that it causes in me and I start just getting really shaky and like almost feverish. And, um, and, that hap and that continues the entire time that I'm hand expressing. So basically, it's been really, really rough for me um, the last week especially. Um, I've been really just going back and forth in my head about what to do because deep down I know that I've given Haven an amazing gift. I've given her breast milk for nearly 16 months. And if we were still breastfeeding, um, I, would n I would never even consider stopping. But because I'm hand expressing and it is, it's been so emotionally, physically and mentally draining on my system, I know deep down that getting off the medication, which is affecting my hormones, stopping hand expressing, stopping that, and, and just trying to balance out myself again and, and put my mental health first is um, 
the right thing to do. And that's been really hard for me because all I've ever wanted to do was breastfeed my daughter until she told me that she had had enough and it didn't work out that way and you know I'm, I hate the fact that breastfeeding like I failed at breastfeeding and that I am now the one deciding when to stop giving her breast milk especially because she still needs it so much she still wants it so much but I'm getting to a point with myself that I know that um, my mental health needs to come first because I'm at this point where I am unable to be the best mum that I possibly can be because I'm just a bit of a mess in the head at the moment and I'm so unstable and I hate to admit that because I've always been a really stable person and it, and it just goes to show that Things can happen and your hormones can get out of whack and things can happen beyond your control. It's just been really, really, really hard. Um, and I do everything that I can to put on a happy and brave face because I'm such a believer in your mindset holds so much power and if you have the right mindset, you know, it can change things and change your outlook on things and change situations and all of that. But this goes beyond uh, a mindset and this is actually an imbalance um, that I need to sort out. And I know that being on this medication is damaging me and I have had to come to terms with the fact that I haven't even reached my goal of 18 months but I just can't do it anymore I just can't I have got half a packet of this medication left and I have I don't know how many ounces of breast milk in the freezer I've got quite a lot I've got quite a big stash and so I think what I've decided to do is finish up the pills and continue hand expressing while I take them and then once I run out of the pills keep hand expressing for as long as I can express for but my supply is going to plummet pretty quickly and um, once I can no longer get much out uh, and I start to dry up then I will put her onto the breast milk in the freezer and then hopefully that can get her through close to 16 months and then I'm going to be weaning her onto homemade almond milk, which I'll add probiotics and stuff to. So where I'm at now is I just, I just know, I just know it's the right thing that I have to do. Um, and there comes a time where mama has to come first. Um, in order to be able to be the best mum that I can be to my kids and to create a happy home and a happy environment for my husband and for my children, I have to be happy. And I am not creating that atmosphere at the moment because it's not that I'm not happy, it's just that I am having so many ups and downs and that is affecting my happiness. So some days I'm really happy and it's a good day and then other days it's really low and dark and I'm really unhappy and um, it's time to put me first so that I can give more of myself back to my kids and my husband and I can just be a stronger and more stable person and influence in their lives because right now um, you know, Caprice is very aware of things uh, that she sees and hears and we have to be very careful with what we say in front of her and, and what, how we act in front of her as well. And when I'm in a really low, dark place, I almost lose control of how I act around her. And she has seen me cry and carry on and, and yell and just be somebody that I don't want her to see me as 
And so that really needs to change because I don't want her to remember me like that. I want her to remember me as being a loving and giving and amazing mother who does everything for her and wants the best for her and has raised her in a happy and stable home. I don't want her to remember me as this psycho that couldn't control her emotions, my emotions, and couldn't control the things I said to my husband in front of her and I don't want her to remember me like that and I don't want her to remember the things that I've said that I may now regret and so it's just it's gotten to the point where um, yeah I have to I have to quit hand expressing um, because I know that especially now that it's become a trigger for my anxiety it's something that I have to do and it's something that I know is right, but deep down, you know, I, I'm still kicking myself and hating the fact that I'm going to be taking Haven off breast milk before I was ready, before she's ready, and, um, you know, just in general, I just feel so much like I've failed, even though I know that I haven't, even though that I know that I've given her so much, and I've probably given her breast milk for a lot longer than a lot of women do, but... When it's something that was so important to me, you know, it's just, it's just really hard to accept. So, um, uh, I tried not to get emotional, but like, I also think it's probably a good thing that you guys see this vulnerable side of me because... Um, it's been a really, really tough year. Uh, we've had some really amazing times and, um, but it, I've also had some pretty dark low times and, um, it's time to get myself right and myself healthy again for my husband's sake, for my children's sake, and of course for my sake. Um, so that's where I'm at. I just felt that it was important to share why I will be stopping hand expressing. Um, I'm really proud of myself for going as long as I have. Most women probably wouldn't invest this much time into it because it's hard work and it's the first thing I have to do when I wake up in the morning and then I have to do it again around lunchtime and then again in the evening and then again um, at night before I go to bed and um, it's it takes up so much time in my day I've had to tell Caprice I'm sorry sweetie I can't play with you right now because mummy needs to hand express and and hearing those words come out of my mouth when Caprice just so badly wanted her mum to play with her um, made me feel sick in my stomach because I was like, what am I doing? Like, is this worth it? And I think, yes, it is worth it because I'm giving breast milk to my baby. But then on the other side, I'm thinking, no, it's not because your three-year-old wants you to play with her and you're stuck freaking hand expressing and not playing with her and not making these memories with her. And so it's just been a battle that I've been going through for a while. Um, and, but I've, I've, I've gotten to a place now where I just know, like, I wasn't ready. No matter how much I was like, oh, I'm so overhand expressing, I was not ready prior to now. But now I actually feel mentally ready. And I know that I'm still going to go through the grieving process that you go through when you stop breastfeeding. Um, I'll probably go through that for a week after when I dry up and she's no longer on breast milk and no longer needing me for that. But I'm also at a place where I know that this is this is right. This is what I need to do for my for my own health. So I'm sorry this has been hugely I'm sorry this has been so long and rambly, but um, I wanted to share my heart with you and I hope you hear my heart in this. And um, I hope to get another more upbeat and happy video out to you very soon. As soon as I can share anything, I will. Um, but just know that um, things are crazy at the moment and that's why I'm struggling to get videos out as often as, as I like to. So anyway, I love you all. Thank you for your support and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to finish eating my lunch now because I've hardly eaten. <laughs>
All right, bye guys.